one of the greatest advocates for human rights and peace with justice in this country is Professor Stuart Rees, who founded the Sydney Peace Foundation. In 2011, he recognised Julian was going to be in danger because he was exposing the secrets of the most powerful world uh, power in the world. He proposed that we travel to London and award him the Sydney Peace Medal. Professor Stuart Rees. I'm going to try and be as brief as Craig Barnes. I just want to say to you, I want you to be beware of three things. The first is about the smear campaign that John Pilger has already mentioned. So that uh, if you smear somebody as a deviant, as a criminal, uh, as, an, uh, as an unworthy, uh, the, the public are then dulled into thinking that that person, in this case, Julian Assange, must be guilty of something. The second beware is beware the cowardice of the mainstream journalists. They have not done their job. They have either ignored the Julian Assange case or they have sided with whatever the news corporation via the Murdoch media and the, and the, White, House, or the White House tells them to do. When Niels Meltzer, the uh, UN Special Rapporteur on Torture said that the governments of the United Kingdom, the United States and Sweden had broken their own laws in the detention and torture of Julian Assange, his significant findings were totally ignored by the mainstream media. And the third beware is something that my colleagues who have already spoken of have mentioned. Beware the cowardice of the politicians. For years, when American politicians demanded that Julian Assange be assassinated, be taken out by any means, taken out by a drone, Hillary Clinton said, there was not a bit of noise, no protest from Canberra. More recently, of course, Scott Morrison has mouthed those wretched words that Julian Assange must, quote, face the music. And if that message doesn't get across, he wheels out his ministers, people like Frydenberg, to, uh, to, to mention those silly words that, the, that any Australian citizen will get the appropriate uh, support. Of course, and I mentioned uh, what Mark has said regarding Andrew Wilkie and George Christensen, we are very grateful to them and the other nine members of the House of Representatives and the Senate for at last, after almost 10 years, standing up for Julian Assange. But remember, those 11 members of the Parliament are 11 out of 227 people employed as the people's representatives in our Parliament. That's only 5%. So we have to ask the question, what are the others thinking about? What values do they live by? Does their current silence mean that they are willing to be obedient to whatever the White House and the arrogant British justice system demand? Your presence here today reminds me of the common law mentioned by the old English poet Milton. He called it the common law of liberty. And it's that respect for liberty, that's that demand for liberty in the case of Julian Assange, that we must follow through with the kind of movement that, Julia, that, uh, that John and others have appealed for. Thank you for being here.